Hi, and welcome to Dare to Dream podcast. This is Debbie Dashinger, and I've been waiting for this show. I've been waiting for the show. I wait weekly for the show anyway, because it is such a divine experience for me to connect with all of you and thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. This June will be 13 years doing this show. Who would have thunk it? Who knew I was headed here? It's a very, very funny story for another time. But here I am still doing what I do out into the world, doing this podcast, writing my books, Dare to Dream This Life Counts, Wisdom to Success, PR Magnet, and more. I produce anthologies, which is a great love of mine, so I can help people donate a chapter if they don't want to write a whole book and have a really great big experience doing it. And I'm also a coach. Besides doing what I do out in the world, speaking on stage, also being interviewed as an expert, I help basically spiritual entrepreneurs to become visible. So I run a visibility hub and specifically what that is, is I coach you to write a page turner book. For authors who have written their book, I have a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, fully done for you. And then I offer twice per year, the ultimate visibility formula, where I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and how to get really fantastic results from doing it. So if you're interested in any of those pieces, go to debbiedashinger.com. We've got online programs as well as live expert programs with me coaching you in groups or privately. And I'm going to be introducing a little bit. I can't even say later because it's going to be pretty soon. I've got, again, for her third time on the show, Dr. Sue Mortar. And we're going to be talking about navigating the unknown and birthing on the other side of this beautiful, fabulous chaos that we are all in right now. Dr. Sue Mortar is a bioenergetic medicine pioneer, and she shares really powerful truths in our upcoming relevant conversation. This show, Dare to Dream, has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards, as well as for a Webby Award. It's syndicated on over 40 outlets and stations, and it is ranked number 100 in all of self-improvement on Apple Podcasts. As you know, the numbers come to me every day. So I'm constantly getting numbers. We're high up, uh, we're like number 40 in Slovakia, number 15 in Vietnam, and number 27 in New Zealand. I love how the world is embracing this conversation. And we're also number 97 globally in reach and outreach on Apple Podcasts. This is very good news. So thank you. Thank you for that because that's you. And thank you for leaving your five-star reviews. It helps other people find this conversation. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. And if you would like to know more about their facilitator programs, their books, their products, there are live workshops all around the world. Go to Dr. Dane, D-A-I-N, here, H-E-E-R.com, or accessconsciousness.com. So my question to you is, do you want to know how to utilize the embodiment of high-frequency energy patterns to activate your full human potential? My guest is international speaker, master of bioenergetic theory and quantum field visionary, Dr. Sue Mortar, who illuminates the relationship of quantum science and energy medicine, elevating human consciousness into life mastery. She's the USA Today best-selling, number one best-selling LA Times, and number one Amazon best-selling author of The Energy Codes, the seven-step system to awaken your spirit, heal your body, and live your best life. She's the founder and creator of the globally taught The Energy Codes Workshop. She's created the Body Awake Certified Yoga Program and is co-creator of the Bioenergetic Synchronization Technique, better known as BEST. And she served on professional licensing boards, is adjunct faculty to two medical schools, and she is the host of Gaia TV's Healing Matrix and co-host of Your Year of Miracles Lifestyle Training, as well as an honored member of the Transformational Leadership Council, where I have many, many friends. It's a beautiful organization. You can go to her website, Dr. Sue Mortar, M-O-R-T-E-R dot com. And I very, very happily welcome Dr. Sue Mortar back again to Dare to Dream. Great to have you. 
Oh, it's wonderful to be here. Always, always wonderful to connect with you, Debbie. So I'm so looking forward to where we get, get to go today. My God, this is so auspicious a time to have you on the show. You're really working a lot right now to provide a lot of service for people, a lot of guidance, and frankly, a really much needed point of view about what's really happening. So first I wanna thank you for that because I am listening, I'm involved, I'm following you, as well as I know many other people around the world. And can you just speak to that in general? What that feels like to be called to speak to masses right now at a time where some leadership is really needed? You know, it, it feels so perfectly perfect uh, mm -hmm. to be bonded with so many people around the world. And some of the things that I'm doing are reaching 40 countries. Some are reaching 70 countries. It is, and, uh, and some are just um, uh, more local. And some are, you know, just a, a global conversation that is happening that is designed to bring people together at a time when consciousness is softening because so many people thought that they knew what was happening, that they knew what life was all about, or at least to the degree that they were familiar with. And then all of a sudden, uh, the entire planet had to pause, had to, had to reevaluate, had to become more contemplative and, and uh, determine what is happening in this now moment, which from terms of speaking of consciousness is a heyday. It is, it is what the soul you know, can't wait to have happen. So for all of humanity to pause at the same time it literally changes this grid, this bandwidth of energy that we call the unified mind uh, to possibility. It opens it to curiosity and to availability. And so we're seated at a time that we're more capable of creating something different than we ever have been before. The energies are completely aligned to support us to reinvent. And that's, uh, that's what we're doing through all the efforts of Mortar Institute, through science and, and bridging quantum science and epigenetics and bioenergetics, but making it super user-friendly and allowing people to have access to the implementation of such you know, breakthroughs that science is bringing us uh, in this real, truly kind of a spiritual time that humanity is, uh, is in, engaging in right now. I have to say, I bumped along a bit in the beginning. I was actually speaking on stage at a workshop with 200 people and our people, our friends and family outside knew what was going on. And they were all a little bit alarmed for us to be gathered in a ballroom at a hotel. And we were a little bit, you know, very nicely unaware and aware at the same time. And so coming back into the world and everything that was going on was, was a little bit jarring. And I had a part of me that was like, oh, this will pass. And when I realized this is not passing, this is actually gonna stay in place for a now longer than I ever anticipated. But what I quickly received for me personally as a download was this like, wow, if I am as a creator, a co-creator, this powerful to shut down the entire world and lock myself ostensibly inside, what is it that I need to take a look at? What is it that I need to learn? Who is it I need to be? What have I not been doing that like, no distractions, right? Can't run around and be on stage right now. And I have really taken it to heart. I mean, it's been a considerable journey thus far for me. Definitely, you know, emotionally and spiritually and calling wise and some of the new pieces I'm going into and things I don't want to have regrets about. So I really take this, um, playfully and very seriously all at the same time, the potency of what's going on. What, how does that resonate for you in your world? I think that that's exactly what I was, what I was speaking to. We're on the same page with this. You're having, you're explaining your personal version of what I'm speaking about in a, in a, in a species uh, perspective, you know, from the bird's eye view, it is a time for exactly what you're describing. You know, we've been asked to stop the, the autopilot and to evaluate. And we have the opportunity to, to take an inventory on what matters most. And are we living into that? Have we been experiencing and appreciating and making conscious decisions? Or were we being led on a track that looked like at the time 
right decisions to make and headed us in a direction that we, that we associated with our goals and our dreams and our desires and our purpose in life. And is it leading to fulfillment? I mean, there were moments in the very beginning, like, you know, a lot of talk about a lot of, a lot of deaths that were headed our way. And it certainly has been the experience of a lot of people. And I've been working one-on-one -on -one with people that, you know, in, in personal um, uh, video conferencing with people who were struggling deeply that, that had contracted the virus and that were trying to, you know, work through the circumstance of their own life. And, um, and, and, and every single person uh, was aware that, hey, this could get, this could get huge quickly. And, and the invitation is use this, use all things to your, uh, to your advantage. Use them as a guide, use them as a sign, use them as an impetus for you to check in make sure that you are living the life that you really want to be living. And that as time goes by, will you have experienced the things that you truly choose to experience if you could have it anyway? Because science is showing us that we can, that we create our reality and that we, we can shape shift our, our dimensional experience. We can even change our own DNA for goodness sake. So of course we have the capacity to change how we show up in relationships or in our work environment, et cetera. And so, this pause is giving people the opportunity real time in, you know, in skin and bone terms, am I doing that? If this is not a curtain call, if this is like the real deal, is this going to roll out the way I truly, you know, dreamt of when I chose to come in and become a human being and do this thing called life? And, uh, and I think that you're, that's what you're saying is that it, it touched you deeply. And therefore you are aligning with your true soul purpose because the soul actions from the place, the essential self actions from the place of deep authenticity and isn't controlled by the external environment and the way that keeping up with the Joneses or doing what your parents thought you were supposed to do or following in the footsteps of. It's, it's more than that. It can be all that, but there is so much more that we are destined to become awake to. And this is really offering us a wonderful opportunity to begin that process or deepen that process or refine that process in, in some way. Yeah, all of the above uh, and in, at different levels and for different reasons in our lives. And I hope that people who are listening are starting to evaluate themselves and take a look at, because I think it's, it's also what a delicious gift, like of how powerful are each of us that we would collectively and individually make that choice that on some level, we couldn't stop the music. We were on the treadmill so quickly that we said, well, that looks pretty good. Let's just shut it down and make new decisions. Right, Deep. exactly. Train ourselves to be able to make new decisions. You see, we're made for not knowing and creating. That's actually what we're made for. Made That's for. good, yeah. not knowing and creating. We're made for not knowing and creating. That's important. Yeah. And, and so when we get freaked out, when we don't know and we can't predict and we don't have control over a situation, that freak out is actually a moment that the essential soulful self can pierce out through that protective or performing personality that thinks it has to have all its ducks in a row and has to control the environment so that things can go in a way that's predictable so that I feel safe. Um, it blows that out of the water and that's what's happening right now. So there's a really a tremendous liberation that is occurring inside of human consciousness right now because nobody knows. People say they think they know, even, even our scientists don't know what, what is happening or how long it's going to happen. We can predict things based on statistics and, and bell curves and do everything that we know to suppress the engagement mathematically of the spread of something in a contagious sort of fashion. But how that plays out in our cultures and our economics and our, you know, our personal financial circumstances and everything across the board is an unknown. And so it is, it is pressing us into, uh, okay, I better, I better hop to, I better come present to myself and make sure that I'm, nimble and I'm flexible and I'm capable of navigating and shape-shifting in, in, in the event that I should need to do so. And above and beyond that even, here's my opportunity to change things. If, if the whole world paused and let me rearrange myself, and it did, and I can, 
then how would I emerge from this differently than I was before? Because ultimately everything is in our favor. So if I'm taking advantage of that, I will emerge from this pandemic situation mm. more equipped, more awake, more integrated, more focused on what matters most to me than I was before it happened. If I'm truly living uh, with all my faculties engaged the way that they're designed to operate. I've been curious about the part that Mother Gaia has to do with this and the animals and the birds, because another thing that I felt very strongly was or sensed is that, you know, Mother, in a sense, Mother Earth, has been very passive in a way by the way that we've overrun her and by the way we've treated her, which has been grossly unkind. And same thing with the animals who have just as much right to be here, four-legged and the winged ones. And I feel like mother stepped up and said, I'm actually very powerful and I actually do know what's going on and this is not okay and we need to stop before we perish. Therefore, I'm claiming back my skies, I'm claiming back my ocean. The animals are going to be able to thrive more and run wild a bit and, and proliferate. So uh, this is my sense, another piece of what's going on. And I would love you to weigh in on what validity you feel that there is, that there's actually a living, breathing organism that we live on that is consciousness, that is saying, I am here and I will survive, and I will thrive, and I am powerful, and I have a say. You bet. So, you know, everything is energy, and consciousness is expanding all the time, and so everything that we come in contact with is part of this greater conscious being, and, and I absolutely concur that, that what is happening with the planet is, um, is, is exactly that, that there's always a harmonization that happens. Um, and when we look at this in terms of science, there are vibrational frequencies that have to remain in a harmonic or the system would collapse. And so if too much of one kind of vibration is starting to become enhanced, other vibrations are ultimately going to reach just through laws of entropy and enthalpy. Uh, if nothing else, they're going to reach a, a point where that, that dissonance can, cannot uh, continue. And so st something will quake or something will shake and a, a new vibration will reinstate and will install itself uh, to reharmonize because that's what's always happening. Always there is this evolution that is occurring and nothing can get in its way. No matter how smart we think we are, no matter how much we invent something, no matter how many super bugs we create because we've been over medicating for so long and creating stronger and stronger antibiotics, for example. And so the only bugs that can survive those antibiotics become stronger than the strain was a generation ago because they're able to overcome the stronger medications. And so we're just throwing nature out of balance all the time. In addition to abusing the planet and abusing the other frequencies like the animal kingdom, et cetera, we are, as well as, you know, the rivers and the trees and all of it is, has been compromised. And so this quaking, shaking, rearranging that is occurring is reestablishing a set point that allows for the, the greater cosmic or universal uh, harmonic to, to sustain itself. And so we've become too smart for our own good. We've become too smart without bringing wisdom along with our intelligence. We, we've shot out ahead of our deep truth and our indigenous truths that have been, that, that have been handed down uh, genetically and our energetic truths that have been happening you know, throughout consciousness and the waves of consciousness for millennia. And when we, when, we in, when we educate ourselves and build technologies that are capable of doing things, it doesn't mean we're supposed to utilize them in the ways that we have in the form of lack consciousness and, and profit margins and competitivisms and the, the various things that have caused the depletions on our planet that are, that are not economically pure, that are not, uh, um, that are not good for the planet, that are not uh, socially just even, that we end up in an imbalance like we were experiencing. And, you know, I, I, can't, I can't, can't say how many times, Debbie, I heard people say in the last five years, 
you know, things are going really crazy. Things are moving so fast. We barely know if we're coming or going. It's so amazing what, what life has become. And, and yet everyone was accepting it, mm. but everyone was complaining about it. Yeah. And so, you know, it's obviously time for that to rearrange and to find a, a greater harmonic. You know. I'm guessing, Dr. Sue, there is no back to normal. You know, and I hear it all the time. Oh, I can't wait. This should be over in a couple of weeks so we can get back to normal in air quotes. And I'm like, hmm, I don't believe that. And if I'd love to know your thoughts. And is there a normal? Is there going to be a new normal? What does it look like on the other side? And then any recommendations for practices you can offer to us that we can start to implement? Because it seems to me that this is going to be a transition into something new. Yes, I would say it's back to new is the only thing that we can ever uh, hope for and, and all we should ever desire. Uh, back to normal. I, I know that when people say that, they're, they're likely meaning that we can engage, that we can leave our homes, that we can interact, that we can go out to eat you know, and share a dinner with friends that we haven't been able to hug and you know, touch and connect with in those kinds of ways. And, and, uh, and maybe you know, back to the workplace and those kinds of things. Absolutely. But, but back to the world that we knew isn't going to happen. It will never happen. It, it can't happen because we've been changed by this. Uh, even if not everyone, even if some people are just standing by and waiting for the clock to tick and the calendar to turn so that we can re-engage because we've been given permission. There are many, many people who have taken this, like you said, to heart. And they've really done some introspective reflecting and they're evolving and they're awakening. And they will emerge from this, whether they had techniques to work with or were engaged in courses while they were sitting at home or not, whether they were, you know, plugging in consciously and intentionally for transformation, they're being transformed. And so, and so as we emerge, we are different. We're a different vibrational frequency emerging from this. We will, we will see differently just because of what we went through. There will be an appreciation. I remember my, my grandparents uh, after the depression, they lived very modestly, even though they had enough money to, to live a little differently than they were. They, they, had, they had dishes in their cupboards that were, that were you know, scratched and chipped, and, but they hung on to them because you know, it was kind of a fear-based thing. It was like you never knew. They never knew that, but what that was going to return, and they didn't want to ever have to worry again. And it, it, it made an impression upon me that, that we're changed by the experiences that we have forever. And our job is to be changed, but to be awakened, not to, not to move and emerge out of this more fearful, but to emerge out of this more conscious and more intentional and more awake to what matters and what has heart and meaning for us. And, and to let go of some things that we've been able to live without, that, that, we, that we started to notice maybe the habits and the knee jerk tendencies that we had operating in the ways that we were that, that maybe were um, unnecessary. And maybe they, they, were, um, they were not as conscious or careful in some ways. And, and so it, it's, an, it's a real opportunity for us to, to, to wake up and to rise up different than we were before and not hope for what we had because what we had created, created a pandemic. Mm -hmm. It was a created pandemic. It, nature doesn't do that to itself. Nature only does that when it's forced into a corner. And as it does... Uh, you know, it expresses out in this way. And so it finds harmony and it's always going to find harmony. If we get back to what we were doing, we'll be back here again in this, in this kind of a, you know, or some, some similar kind of circumstance where we're being offered an opportunity to, um, to become more, more awake, to, to rise differently than we were before. Mm, to become a we, a unity, which would be a really beautiful thing to be on this planet. I'd like to experience that in my lifetime, certainly. Yeah, we're by design meant to be that. We are actually, as humanity, a single organism. You know, you spoke about Mother Gaia, Mother Earth being a living, breathing organism. The whole of humanity is a living, breathing organism as a one being. And we have many points of consciousness that are directing the interactions. But if you think about each individual as one little synapse in the brain of this higher being, that the choices of integrating and the choices of leaning in and embracing equate to unification in the brain. 
it equates to our right brain and our left brain starting to come into union so that we can be whole brained individuals operating holistically instead of overly dramatic or overly mental we can become uh, meaningfully wise and intelligent uh, because we are more integrated than we were before. And so as we've had to look out our windows and, and wave and a connection and a bond is made that, you know, you've lived next to these people for years and, you know, you don't do that every night at seven o'clock. You don't ring bells and bond with each other across town until you do. And once you do, the invitation is, what are you gleaning from that? What's happening? I can tell you energetically that that one being is starting to awaken as the oneness that we truly are. It is awakening like a sleeping giant through this. And that is a glorious thing. Oh, it is a glorious thing. We're going to take a very quick break and be right back with more with Dr. Sue Mortar. I am going to tell you that if you are one of the people who are either saying I'm bored out of my gourd, right now, or if you are somebody who is really wanting to channel your creativity, I absolutely will help you to do that. Do stand for your greatness. In my estimation, this is a beautiful time to be creating, to be doing projects. Um, and I understand some of you are on a sofa and feel a little overwhelmed, and that's okay too. You're probably satellite dishes who can perceive a lot of the energy on the planet. But if you can channel your own energy into something you would like to write, I will help you get there. Take action. I have opened an author membership platform at very special prices for just right now. And this is called The Visible Visionaries. This is where I show you how to write your page turner book. And I've been offering free webinars leading up to this. I've been really impressed with how many people are showing up and are really hungry to do this and bully for you, let me help you and be of service to get you there. Because what you choose to do now will be what you have to show out into the world in six months for what this time is meant for you. It's time really to harness that energy and that power inside of you. If you have a message, if you have a story to tell, go, <laughs> let me get you there from start to publish. Go to debbie-inger.com slash visible visionaries. There are more people reading books right now than ever before. It is a perfect time to do this. DebbieDashinger.com slash visible visionaries. And if you're just tuning in, I'm speaking with Dr. Sue Mortar. And I just want to say very quickly, she also offers some beautiful things out in the world. I've been doing her free body awake yoga in the mornings. I my body is very sad in the mornings. It does not happen. So thankfully, there are replays. She also has a healing transmission once a month, the last Wednesday of every month. This is free, folks, for an hour, and you totally feel a shift. She's so generous through this time, through many of her offerings. So go, there, her website's perfect, easy to navigate, drsuemorter.com, and you can follow the events calendars, and then should you and when you, I will say when you fall madly in love with her as I am, and you want to do more, then you sign up for the classes and you're ready to rock and roll in an energetic way. <laughs> so <clears throat> you've said, Sue, that when you have had your particular awakening and your third eye opened, that you were able to see inside of you. I'm taking a quote from something I heard you say. So forgive me if it's a little out of context, hopefully you're tracking. But when you said you could see inside of you in past lives and concurrent universes, bam, I'm like, curious, what does that look like? What was that experience like? And it seems like how you ground yourself and anchor yourself through something like that to know you're okay, it's pretty fascinating. So if you don't mind dishing a little bit about your big awakening, I would love to hear it. Well, sure. I uh, had no idea that this was even something to try to accomplish. And I'm glad I didn't because I would have <laughs> over tried and it would have never happened uh, because that's the way I was living my life at the time. It's always trying to achieve and accomplish and do good at whatever I was expected you know, to do. And I was drawn to meditation and I instantly started having transcendental experiences. And uh, I awakened in 
to a state of consciousness far beyond this dimension. And I could see 360 degrees around me in a light so brilliantly bright, it was 10 times brighter than the brightest day in the desert that I had ever seen. And it was, uh, it was profoundly perfect. I was completely complete and whole. I had zero expectation or any kind of desire because everything was there. There was nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing wrong. It was just here, whole. I could see 360 degrees around me and I was me, but I wasn't in a body. I was this ray of light that was extended down and I could see the earth beneath me about the size of a marble and I was embedded into it up to what would have been my knees. But this beautiful translucent iridescent wave would rise and fall every time I inhaled or exhaled. And, and what I knew was that light was becoming love as it passed through these rays of light that we are. I knew that everyone was, this is what we're doing. And that it was all just consciousness and that this life on earth was just an experience that I was having as I would dial into it or I could return to this place. And so to this, like this seat of the consciousness, like this true destination that is the center of um, the, the cosmos itself and in the center of creation, the created world. So it sounds so fantastical to say these words, but, but yeah, that's what happened. It's 20 years ago. And I devoted my life to figuring out how in the heck to have that experience again. And in the process of doing that, I codified what it took me to do that. And I started sharing it with my patients. And then they started getting better faster and staying better longer and transforming in their lives in ways that they hadn't been before. And so I wanted to share that with more and more people. And so I ended up, you know, traveling around the world and teaching it to, you know, hundreds of thousands of people since then. So, so inside the experience, what is it that happens? Um, when I'm in meditation, I can, I can access various levels of consciousness, various dimensions. I can perceive past life experiences or parallel universe types of uh, realities. Um, but, but really what matters and what makes a difference in my life is that I'll be here in this body, living life like everybody does, getting up, going to work, doing my thing, and suddenly I will have a knowing that comes right through my brain and out into the images that I'm looking at. And it is as if a different knowing about what I'm looking at is happening because it can pour right down through this open channel and into this movie that we're all walking around inside of. And so... I can see life's happenings for what they really are versus how we get caught up in perceiving them from this third dimensional reality alone. The significance of that is I end up having a, a wisdom response instead of an intellectual response. I end up creating things that or inventing things in the, in the moment because it's what is needed in the moment. It's very different than knowing ahead of time what you're going to do. It's a knowing that I'll know when I get there. And the more I stay open, I can let this universal intelligence come through and project itself onto the circumstances that are before me. And so, you know, how to translate that? Uh, I stress less. I don't worry as much. I don't fret very often. Uh, decisions come easily. I just know here's what I'm doing, here's what I'm not. I'm able to forgive because I'm not identifying with a judgment that something needs to be forgiven anymore. I'm able to embrace things. I'm able to begin again rather than saying, well, no, I've tried that you know, 10 times and it's not, it doesn't work, so this isn't gonna work. It, that, that kind of thinking that I used to be locked into and, and really plagued by has ceased or settled itself enough that it doesn't get to run the show. It doesn't get to interfere with what's really trying to happen through us into this life experience that we're here having. And so the imagery sometimes is fantastical and otherworldly, geometric shapes or colors or literally other destinations that sound bizarre for me to talk about, but 
I do have them. I go there. I, I can't say I don't because I do. And, um, you know, there are places in, on other, literally on other, you know, planets. And I hesitate to say that when people oh, don't. Oh, thank God you're saying this. <laughs> this is a huge question I've had for you. And I've been so hesitant because I don't want to put you in a public way in the spotlight. Yeah. But the moment I met you on camera, I said, if I may, she's not from here. There is yeah. something else coming through that is not here. Yeah. And I understand on some level that, that is so for all of us. That's not weird at all. And I'm so grateful that you even organically are going here because I've had this enormous curiosity about yeah. what all that energy is that's coming through from, from you through you because I know what, how I receive it. Mm -hmm. And we're all made of that. We all do have the capacity to do that. And that's what I'm teaching people in the coursework that I teach is how to connect and, and access that channel that we all are. And, and it's not that we're channeling something from beyond us. It's that we are all of that and that we have the opportunity to bring it here and assimilate it. And if we use our whole bodies in the way that they're designed to be used, the body operates as a filtering system to allow it to be tangible and relevant and logical as well as phenomenal and multidimensional and otherworldly. And so um, it, is, it, is, it is my deep desire to make it practical and to make it user-friendly and to be the embodiment of it so that we can all wake up to this. And that's, you know, that's what I'm doing. But, but I, I came into it from a scientific community where you had to have reproducibility, you had to have you know, certain criteria for something to, to, to be true. And, you know, from the experiences that I have had, it didn't matter to me what science had to say any longer. It was like, I can't deny what I'm experiencing. I cannot deny what I, what I see and sense and feel and know. And I can't deny the effect that it's had on other people by my sharing it. Mm -hmm. So the more I let myself share it, the more people heal. And that, which is one of the reasons I love the, the monthly healing transmission is because I'm able to have enough spaciousness in between the words that I'm saying to access that and bring it here. Mm -hmm. And and then to say a few more things just to keep people aligning and receiving. And then I can go and I can bring it here, which can't really happen in normal conversation, the way that our culture is used to communicating. We wall a lot of that out unknowingly because our minds are so busy processing life the way our minds process life. But there is so much more to us than our thinking analytical minds that it's almost criminal that, that we use logic as our primary criteria for, uh, for accepting something or that we, anything that's tangible and touchable and reproducible is the criteria for what is real. When that's actually quite hilarious when, when you can live in the unmanifest world and see from that perspective, you can see how th that we're just playing in a sandbox here. It's the equivalent of walking across a yard and seeing some kids playing in a sandbox who absolutely know that they're driving these little trucks and they're having, they're building this castle and they think that's it. And it isn't. And that's really what humanity is caught up in. Their sandbox is not the be all end all. It is a project that each and every one of us are engaging in. And the name of the game is, can I, will I awaken to my true self from inside the sandbox. Can I realize that it's a holographic universe and I'm everything that happens in my life is in my favor. It's trying to nudge me awake. Or do I get caught up in judging it and shutting it down and calling it bad and wrong and going over here and playing somewhere else in the sandbox when all the while the whole game is an attempt to serve us to a higher level of knowing the truth of who we are and what we're capable of. Well, clairsentience and claircognizance, that is a, a knowing. And I'm intimate with that myself, like, like a download and you just know what you know what you know. And it is so, and it generally is exactly so out here. What I hear you describing sounds quite different um, to me, much more profound. And I'm curious, is it a sense for you of channeling or being some kind of a portal for this information to literally disseminate through you, are you in conversation with that you can literally say, I need this right now, or it's maybe a more telepathic thing and it literally comes? 
Are you aware of other beings, as it were, who help and work through you? All, all of the above in different ways. Think of it like levels of consciousness. When somebody's operating from their five senses, they're going to call upon their guides or pray for help or speak to the angels or, you know, just ask God for assistance, you know, just please help me in this moment. And that's like a first step of opening beyond just, I'm in this by myself and I got to make this happen. And, and it's a, you know, do or die. And it's all up to me. And that kind of thinking is, is a very collapsed way of thinking. And then we open to asking for assistance and calling, you know, to, to guides or, or God or what have we. And, and then there's an, another level of that consciousness, which is uh, more of a, I am that type of consciousness that if I'm, if I'm receiving from the angelic realm, from the angels, if you, if you would, then it's because the part of my consciousness that exists at the angelic realm level is awakening and I'm able to communicate there. So really what I want people to realize is there's nothing that you're not. You can keep climbing that, that dimensional ladder and you will expand your own consciousness into recognizing that you go all the way through uh, what, what people are calling upon and gleaning from and getting assistance from that you realize that is a part of your own highest self and the higher up this ladder of your highest self or your higher self you go, the more you begin to realize that it's all me, that I'm a part of all of that and that it isn't separate from me. So I would say that the best of all the things that you said, I would say the best way to, for me to describe the sensation that I have inside of this place is I'm a threshold through which cosmic intelligence passes and the more of my own personal work I do to heal up uh, illusions that were established along the way of this life or past lifetimes or what have you, the more I clean that up, the more clearly I allow the threshold to bring universal intelligence through and out into the world without having a distortion, without it being dampered or altered in any way. And so I do my own work all the time because I notice, number one, it feels better. And number two, the, the work that comes through and the life experience that I have as a byproduct of that becomes more and more perfected in love all the time. There's more love and abundance every day because of cleaning up the, cleaning up the threshold. So, so there are many places that I reside and there are many beings that I used to be in contact with that I now realize are parts of my own consciousness. Wow. And this is true for every one of us. Mm -hmm. And this is what, I mean, it's a radical, radical statement to make, you know, in, in, in this kind of a setting, but mm -hmm. here we are, <laughs> here we are having it. Right. So, so there's nothing that we're not. And the, and the, the, the ancient sages and the oldest texts, the Upanishads, the Yoga Sutras, the Vedas, these ancient texts say the same thing. I didn't know that they said that before I knew that. But as I came to know that, then I was brought into the presence of these writings and made aware of these teachings. And it was so validating to what was birthing inside of me. Mm -hmm. I, I, have, I had no words for it. And, and I was thrilled because I knew that if it was waking up inside of me, this is what we're all made of. And we're all designed to wake up to this, which is why I'm so incredibly passionate about sharing it as fast as I can with as many as I can, because it's there waiting to be tapped. And we're busy living in a different reality than, than we'll allow it to be tapped fully. And so it starts with deep gut feelings and trusting that and following your heart of hearts, but learning how to do that in a conscious and intentional fashion and building the neuro circuitry to sustain that connection so that we never lose it. So that we don't have these days where we like feel connected and everything's like happening. And then these other days where we're like completely clueless and caught up in our stuff and wondering what was I thinking that I was ever a connected individual in some sort. And then, you know, a couple of days later, you're back plugged in again. It's like, we should never have to disconnect. And, and that's a circuitry issue. And that's, that's really what I'm, what I'm interested in teaching people. But, but yes, in, in, in response to your multidimensional question, I, 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 I can't say enough about it, but I would, I would best describe it as I'm not a self. I'm not a self in that way. I am a, 
a place where information is coming through and it's being translated into words and energetics and transmissions are occurring, whether I'm talking or not. But every time when I'm teaching, it's happening. I might be focusing on a particular subject or topic, but the whole stuff is blowing through this channel all the time, which is why I have unwavering energy. It just goes and goes and goes. I can teach for five days talking nonstop. And at the end of it, I could turn around and start again because I'm not using my own energy. It's a flow and a stream that isn't mine. It's, it's not me doing that. It's, and it's all me at the same time. There's just not a personal, isolated, separate self that's, that's trying to you know, have an existence or an identity or a performance or it's not like that. It's, it's just completely complete and flowing is the best way I can describe it. I, I concur. It is my experience of you and I'm so grateful for you to put words to what I feel, sense, experience of your being and way beyond your being when I'm with you. And so none of this surprises me. It's perfect, it's beautiful. And I just wanna say, I don't know how other people feel and I can't wait to hear if you feel the same, but man, I will have some of that, please. I would <laughs> love to also be able to be a healer, a conduit at that level and to be able to serve at that level from that space and capacity. Sounds beautiful. Debbie, when people have that desire, when you can say that, when you're aligned like that and you tap that, that awareness, mm. it's, it's destiny. It cannot not happen because it's actually what we come here to do and to be. And we're busy doing and being other things because we think we have to or we're supposed to or it's just all we know. And sometimes people have to come in lots of times before they really can get, can get in this project and keep their wherewithal without splatting and dispersing and getting all caught up in the drama. But by the time someone can say, man, I want that, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of aligning and allowing and learning how to cut down the time that we think it takes to develop it. It doesn't take time, it takes circuits. And in, by a default mechanism, life will provide enough opportunities for us to build the circuits, but it takes a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And if we would get conscious and intentional about building the circuits, we can collapse time and allow the wisdom of a lifetime to be cultivated in a very short amount of time that we would call time as we know it, and, and have access to this channeled information much more rapidly. It shouldn't take a lifetime, but the way we live by the default mechanism, it will only take a lifetime to glean or to gain the degree of evolution that we're, that we're asking for at this time. Mm. So that's why I say by the time you're asking for like, I want that, it's, it's, it means enough of those energies have quickened into a, a channeled resource that you'll be able to pierce those veils and, and have that, have that experience. Thank you. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. You've said, Dr. Sue, that <clears throat> creation and reaction are the same letters, but just rearranged in a different way. And Neville said, the whole world is you pushed out. So here we are in this place, new choice, rebirthing. What, what can you offer us around the rebirthing period to come? And, and if there's anything you have, and you're always so wonderful at practices, tools, or maybe even uh, leading us through something, I'm super open. I know the listeners would love it. What can you offer us about being a doula right now to help us rebirth into a whole new powerful way, whether it's the your piece that the people are really connecting with and going, yeah, I'll have that too. That's me. That's why I came here. <clears throat> Whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, so the whole of reality is us pushed out. It means that it, the same thing that you're talking about reaction creation Am I a reactor or am I a creator? And 
And, and that's really the, the ultimate question to ask. Am I reacting to the things that someone else is doing? Or am I recognizing that I'm the creator and that I've asked that person to do what they're doing so that I have a reaction to it so that I can see my reaction and heal it and embrace it and love into it so that it doesn't run my life because we're being run by the things that we're not conscious of where our subconscious is running us. And, and it's all an attempt for the subconscious to become conscious. That's why it's causing us to make the choices that we make and to do the things that we're doing and to stay in the things that we're in or to leave the things that we do. It's all happening on a grand scale um, because we're here to wake up, to wake up through this life experience. And so, so the thing that I would suggest that people do to be able to make sure that they are in the creatorship seat, that they're not going to be a reactor anymore, that to some degree, every single person that is, that is watching this is reacting in some parts of their lives. They may be creating in some parts of their lives and they may be, may be masterful at it. And they might even be using those parts of their lives that they're very creative in to compensate or to overcompensate for the parts of their lives that they're still being a reactor in. And they might even justify that they're not a reactor because look at all these ways I'm creative. But I assure you that if you're watching, there is a part of you that is still stuck in, in reactivity in life because every human being on the planet is here evolving in that way. And as soon as we can pick up on that and work with it consciously and not take it personally and try to hide it or suppress it or deny it or run from it and, 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 and instead take it and work with it and embrace it and love into it, the degree to which we can do that and not take it personal, but make it a part of a project for a greater purpose for the whole of humanity. We are doing this work. The more we can embrace that, the better off we will be in the long run, the sooner, and the sooner we will actually be creators. So here's the one thing that I would suggest. Lots of, I wish, you know, we had lots of time to do lots of things, but we can do that, you know, at another time or in other settings. But but just, just do this. There's a feeling that you're probably feeling right now in your life in particular because this pandemic is happening and the whole of humanity is being invited to evolve consciously. There's a feeling that's happening in your life that you don't like. There's probably something that you're up against that you just don't like that feeling. And so instead of feeling it, you start thinking. Or instead of feeling it, you go eat something. Or instead of feeling it, you get busy working. Or instead of feeling it, you project it onto someone else and, and then pick a fight or something happens. And the invitation is this. Find what the feeling is that you're so afraid to feel. You're so afraid of it that it's running your life and you're, you're doing all kinds of compensatory things to keep from feeling this one feeling. If you just let yourself feel it and sit and breathe with it and anchor yourself in your heart and breathe in your belly and let yourself feel the feeling, if only for five minutes, every day. And, and the feeling will shift and change and a new feeling will come in. But if every day you make it a habit to allow yourself to feel a feeling that you're afraid to feel or that you're not even aware that you're not allowing yourself to feel, but if you just set the intention, it will start to reveal. And you will become more familiar with more different vibrational frequencies and it will open the threshold because the only thing that keeps the door shut of the energetics uh, and, and the possibility of cosmic intelligence to move through you is that you consciously or subconsciously ward off certain energies that you don't like to feel. But inside those frequencies are, in, are also, it's an opening to accessing levels of intelligence right behind that, that blockage that you've put up. When you bring it down and melt it, now the blockage isn't there. And that energy can come all the way in and be translated by your system and show up in your life as an outpicturing of a life that you love living, one that's more conscious and intentional and creative rather than reacting and dispersing and dodging these frequencies that you are not interested only because you're not familiar with them. There is nothing out there that is bigger than you, nothing. And life will convince you of it one way or another. Even if it takes you down and you have to lay in bed for six weeks to get strong enough to get up and out again. The whole thing is by divine design to get you to come home to yourself. Because when you do, you start dissolving all these blockages that are keeping you from being the threshold of universal revelation, revealing universal intelligence that you're designed to be. It's, it's in the, the structure 
It's in the design of our very being here that we're supposed to bring it with us when we come and not interrupt it, distort it, interfere it with it or suppress it in any way. And when we do suppress it, we become depressed, we become sick, you know, and, and it's just, it's time to be free instead of that. So I feel this is a time, a perfect time where people have a little more time and spaciousness on their hands to just move in and invite some deeper parts of us to surface and be present with it. It will melt in the presence of your own love, your own breath. What is the big primal yes? What's a primal yes? The primal yes is we are cosmic, eternal, multidimensional, universal beings. We are limitless and our minds have taken on the wrong role that are not allowing us to experience it, to express it and to share it and to exchange it. The primal yes is I am creator. I am the creator of my life experience. And to improve upon the experience that I am having, that yes needs to get louder than the no thank you in our lives. Mm. What do I say yes to? That's where we need to direct our attention. What do I say yes to? You know, in your recent online yoga class, you were showing photos of a retreat that you did on Easter Island. So there you were with your back to the statues, the amazing, I'm sure way over six foot tall statues, and your whole class doing yoga was sitting on the ground facing you and the statues. And I was like having this awesome freak out. I was at Rhythmia last year. I had just an extraordinary experience. It's probably one of the few times I actually experienced fully what you're talking about when we can be all that, including sacred geometry. But I had the most interesting experience. They have replicas of the heads, of the Easter Island heads. Yes. And um, it became a thing over four nights where it was literally somehow I was being communicated with, this was a husband of mine in another life and we were profoundly in love and um, it would beckon to me to sit under it in the moonlight at times during ceremony and I would do it and I had this most compelling experience. I came back, I looked it up thinking, is this real? Is this myth? Did they exist? Was this really a husband? I still don't know really what it meant or the relevance. Um, and I found very little out about it, but I know I still have this visceral experience when I see this phenomenal head, which <laughs> when I was uh, on ayahuasca, I will tell you looking at its uh, profile, <laughs> I was like, you look like Shakespeare with a shaved head. Like you're not a great looking dude, but clearly we had something. <laughs> very meaningful that this is even taking place every night, every night, every night. I had a few of those from the divine giving me information about who I was to this. And so all of that to say, I saw you leading the retreat and talking about primal instincts and seeing my ex-husband, <laughs> my husband, if you will, behind you, if that's even a thing. So I don't know what all of that meant, but it was like, it was you and him and and me re-seeing it. And uh, do you have any sense, were these people real? Did they exist back in like 380 AD, these uh, now stone replicas? Was this a real society? Yes. Ancient civilizations came to the planet. There's much, much, much documentation. Much has been left behind for all of our sacred sites around the world, which is why I travel to these sites and take people to them so that we can have the experiences of these energies and learn about it. And most importantly, awaken inside of our own DNA um, what is there to be awakened. What happened with you was you had a, a, a memory. It is you accessing a deeper lying truth that is, that is behind the scenes. And when we when we learn to meditate in certain ways, which is what I teach, or when we go and you know do ayahuasca or, or do psychotropic things in, in whatever fashion or form, what's happening is the thinking mind, that analytical driving mind gets taken offline. And all of a sudden we have access to this bigger state. I teach people how to do that without the use of something on the outside, so, simply so they will build the circuitry to be able to embody it and integrate it and sustain it. 
uh, so that it can have, you know, the longest lasting benefits in, in the most ways. Um, but I also understand that, that, you know, a lot of people do both that um, and, and have tremendous experiences. The point is we're here to remember. We are, we are supposed to be remembering, but we can't try to remember the way we try to remember where we put the car keys. It's a totally different aspect of our, of our system, of our nervous system and our consciousness. And so what was happening for you in that moment? And uh, by the way, those statues are like 30 feet tall, 20, I don't know how tall they are. They're very tall. We were way far, you know, at the foot of them on, on that particular day that the pictures were taken with the yoga class, but they're very, many of them are very, very tall. So big beings. And in ancient Egypt, very big beings at Abu Simbal and, uh, and showing the, the civilizations that were upon the planet that were very much, uh, they're very large and uh, in proportion, but uh, very, very different in magnitude than, than who we are as a species today. And when I go to Egypt and I take people to Egypt or to, or to India, and India has the gods and the goddesses of Hinduism, they're always depicted as these giant beings and um, uh, multidimensional beings. It is written in the Egyptian history books that, that fourth dimensional civilizations were solicited to come to this planet and literally bring the information about love so that we could learn to, to tether our mental bodies so that the mind, which is the, had the cap capability of blowing things up because it was so powerful in ancient Egypt, that, that they solicited higher intelligence, literally civilizations of higher intelligence to come and put a damper on, on this, which is why we today you know, have this experience of the, the power of love and the importance of love to tame the mind and why we're so much happier when we're loving than when we're just thinking and analyzing and overthinking and, and so forth. So there's so much in a conversation like that. I'm teaching a Sedona retreat, um, which we cover all those kinds of, of uh, concepts and, and tie them together for understanding of this. But what was happening with you, Debbie, was you're remembering part of your eternal lineage, your, your long lineage, we'll just call it that, your long lineage, very long, that, um, that has you as an old soul here now wanting to put it all together, which is what you were saying when you say, I want to be a healer. I want to translate this. I want to channel this. I want to have that kind of thing. You're destined to have it. And the fact that you're having these memories and these awakenings and these images and these impressions, when people have those, it's because they're remembering. And it's important that we realize that, that it's not just tapping something that's over there. It's you've come a long way, baby, and here you are. And it's a process of you putting those pieces together so that it's not a fantastical experience. It's just what you're here to do. And when it becomes like that, we, our emotions fuel it instead of think that it's too wild or uh, too amazing or too freaky, you know, and we kind of push it away because it's, it's unfamiliar. So by doing something simple like what I was suggesting, when people embrace feelings that they're not used to feeling, and that they think they don't like to feel, once they start allowing themselves to feel them, they'll actually find a tremendously empowering state that accompanies that. Now, I, uh, I usually say in an interview, that's gonna make you more functional in this life, and you won't be so afraid of feeling those, those emotions next time somebody stirs it in you. But in this conversation, I'm gonna say, by feeling that feeling, you're opening the channel that's gonna allow you to remember your long lineage. And it's those same things that get in our way just depends on what you're looking for. You know, some people come to, you know, watch a show like this and they're like, you know, I just want, I just want to have a better relationship with my husband. I just can't stand what happens between us all the time. You know, and somebody else is like, you know, I'm really interested in my, my life purpose. And somebody else might come and say, you know, I got this thing inside of me that just knows there's more to life than just this thing that we're in, but I can't put the pieces together. And, you know, apparently in this show, we're going to address them all. <laughs> and, you know, that's the point, right? That's why we're here. Dare to dream. Yeah. Dare to dream, exactly. And dare is so operative. Uh, dare to be all of why you came here to be. What do you have coming up that people who are listening and watching can sign up for? Please, uh, I know you always have a beautiful list. <laughs> yes. Um, so let's see. Well, I'm doing free body awake yoga on on Mondays and Thursday mornings, 11 o'clock Eastern time. If you go to freebodyawakeyoga.com, we'll send you the link and you can join us. And it's a fantastic physical expression of what Debbie and I are talking about today. 
And let's see what else. The monthly healing transmission is also a free thing. Monthlyhealingtransmission.com. Uh, you can do that. You can access it all on my website too. Um, and then I have some other programs that I'm teaching, which are, uh, there is the Sedona retreat, which is, we're not going to Sedona this year. We're, we're having the Sedona retreat, which is where I go and I talk about all these ancient civilizations and tie it together from crazy stuff like we're talking about today, about ancient Lemuria and Atlantis and ancient Egypt and Stonehenge and, and talking about Machu Picchu and ancient Egypt as far as the Nile and the Great Pyramids and what's really happening there. And I bring quantum science into the mix and epigenetics and bioenergetics and Mostly it's all about activating your own DNA so that you can wake up to the truth of who you are and heal on, on every level of your life. And I'd really like to make it a little more user-friendly in the world. So, so this, we're going to broadcast this year for the first time ever. And so people have access to it just by going to my website. They can find that out. I'm also teaching the uh, last weekend of May um, a Thank program you. about hands-on healing, mm -hmm. which is you know, how to work as a practitioner on other people. And um, uh, I'm also doing, lastly, I'll just say this one, there's many more, but another one that's coming up is a modulated program online. Um, these are all online. The, uh, that is a, uh, an ability for people to facilitate and hold trainings on the, the topics that I'm talking about by use of, of the book, the Energy Codes book that I wrote that we launched last year. Um, people are learning how to teach from the book. So I'm, I'm gonna teach you how to teach these ideas from the book. So if somebody's watching that would like to be, you know, a coach, a facilitator, a, a trainer of workshops, that kind of thing, or book study clubs, you know, that's a great way to, to learn and share and all of that at the same time. So that's beautiful. Is this going to be a training that people can incorporate into what they do? So for instance, since I teach visibility, how to be interviewed, how to write a book, how to become a bestseller, is that something that would be po possibly woven? Or is this a really a pure version of what you've been given to put out in the world. Both. It is, it is because it's based on the book and the book has, you know, this deep, rich content, but you can take the, the work. And as long as, you know, you're, you're, you're still giving, giving, you know, an honoring of the program and what it is, but you can, you can say, if you take this principle that is part of the energy codes and infuse it into some other, you know, aspect of, of a uh, service that you're doing in the world, all the better. Because I wanna infuse it into, you know, all of the facets that all of the people are, are, are drawn to serve in. Um, in that way, we serve more people. We, we, we wake up more people in, in a very deep, rich, integrated way. And that's the point. We don't wanna just pop people open. We want to uh, awaken them, but give them ways to integrate and make sure that they're embodying what, what we're sharing. So for instance, if you wanted, you know, someone to be able to, to feel more confident about, about getting their voice together and stepping out there in the world with it, the, the principles inside of that program are going to teach them how to embody and how to anchor in a way that allow this energy to flow through their system um, much more easily and gracefully. That's wow. the point. This is, this is an abundance of possibilities. <laughs> There That's we are. beautiful. Thank you. So I even just learned something I didn't know that you offered. Dr. Sue, as always, really, thank you. Thank you so much for really bringing it and your willingness to really open up the curtain to everything today and who you are and keep showing up, just to keep showing up for us at a time when we really need leaders like you. Mm. Debbie, it is... It's my purpose on the planet. And so it's a great joy. Truly, it's, it's the reason, I, you know, a threshold loves it when stuff gets to come through the threshold, right? That's it. So we get together and have this conversation and it's a great joy for me too. And thank you for what you're doing to, uh, to help serve people in all the ways that you're doing, to awaken them to their true talents and their gifts and for uh, allowing conversations such as this to reach so many people. So it's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. And Dr. Sue has already been scheduled to come back on in the fall. So you will have so much more of her. And I just want to end today's show with this quote from the amazing Joseph Campbell, who said, opportunities to find deeper powers within ourselves come when life seems most challenging. 
You can subscribe to this weekly number one transformation conversation called Dare to Dream. My upcoming guest is Michael Benner, known for his popular talk radio programs originating in California. And you'll know that voice from KABC, KLOS, Arrow 93.1, and KPFK, to name a few. I found Michael in my 20s when he was bold enough to step out and start talking about metaphysics, and I'd go hear him speak. And he has since become a friend and a colleague. So I'm very excited to introduce this amazing man to you if you don't already know him. And if you would like to write a chapter, I'm producing a book on dogs because it's time for some joy. And the book is called The Ultimate, M-U-T-T as in Mutt, The Ultimate Book for Dog Lovers. It's an anthology compilation. I'm taking people through the entire process. You will be well held. It will be a guaranteed international bestseller and more and even more. You can go to debbied.net slash anthology. It's D-E-B-B-I-D dot net slash anthology and you can write a chapter in this dog compilation. Remember to dare and be free to follow all the amazing guidance that Dr. Sue offered us today so you can be the person you truly came here to be at this amazing time on the planet. Thank you.